Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple high-low game for PC and mobile in Unity and welcome to episode number two. In this tutorial we are going to add in some textures, we're going to add in the card textures, we're going to add in some button textures and a background texture as well and we're going to put it all together and see what it looks like in our game. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So first things first, there will be a link below in the pinned comment uh, for you to get hold of the textures that I'm about to use. So what you'll need to do is download it and unzip those textures and you'll see them looking a little like this. So I'm going to select all of these textures including this cards folder and drag and drop them straight into Unity. Now you'll notice I have dropped them here in this section below which is the project window. Remember this is where all of our assets get stored. So all you need to do is literally just drag and drop into Unity. It will take just a second to import and there we go. There they all are. Now let's organize this up a little bit more than what they are. Let's click here on our scenes and you'll see that this is where we've dropped all of those textures. Now we don't really need them in here, do we? Because they're not scenes, they're textures. So let's use this opportunity and create a new folder. Down here, make sure we clicked on assets, right click, create, folder, and let's call this textures. And you can open that folder, see, nothing in there. First things first, let's drag this cards folder from scenes into textures. So hold the left mouse button, and you can see we're able to drag it and just drop it into textures. And then same with these other textures. Let's select this one, this one, this one, and this one, and drag them into textures as well. So you can see now that we only have that scene in that folder and we have all the textures in this folder. Now let's apply the background texture. So currently it's just green. There's not a lot to it. So let's click on the raw image that is actually that background. Let's right click and let's click on rename and we'll call this background. Now, how do we make this texture appear on this object? Well, remember when we changed the color to a dark green? Well, let's change it back to white and then let's drag and drop this texture over here onto this texture section. So drag and drop and there we go and we can see there is our texture right there. So that's looking kind of better already rather than just that dull dark green. Now, the key thing what we need to do here is we need to work with our cards and they're all going to be done via images rather than a raw image. You'll see the reason why in just a moment, but we do need to make sure that it is an image and we do have one of them images already. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to take this image and I'm going to move it outwards. Now the reason I've done that is because that is no longer shown on screen no matter what. It's always going to be off screen. So this white line, which is our canvas, everything inside is seen in the screen right here. Everything outside of it is not visible. Now we're going to start with the number two card. So let's go to cards. And let's select this number two card, make sure we're on the image and then drag and drop over here. Oh, of course, hopefully, hopefully you spotted that. Why didn't that work? Why didn't that work? It's because it's not a sprite. Well done if you got that. Hope you did. <laughs> so number two is currently a texture as are all the others. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of those cards. And you'll notice over here in the inspector panel, we have texture type is set as default. Let's click on there and let's click on sprite and then click on apply. And what that will do is change its type so we can use it on an image. And if I drag and drop number two now onto there, we can see it does indeed change to number two card. Now, the reason it has to be a sprite is if we look at the rounded corners, we can actually see through this right here. If it were a texture, that would be black. And I'll show you what I mean by that a little later on, probably in the next tutorial. But there is a reason, again, why we use image and raw image for different things. Now, 
let's bring this number two card back into view here and you'll notice it is behind our background if we move the background up in the canvas it will place it behind now it's always a good idea to kind of keep in mind how everything in the canvas works in the order of everything so the higher up the list the further back it appears the further down the list the further forward it appears so the bottom most object in the canvas will be the most forward object you see on the canvas the one right in front so now let's resize this card so we're going to have our cards probably somewhere in the middle but that's not quite in the middle so we're going to use something called the rec tool to align it to the center so over here we have this rec tool looks like a square with small squares at the corners select and you can see our object is now surrounded by blue so we can resize this to make it look a little better you can make it however you want but the key thing here is we're able to move it and you'll notice that as we move it it starts snapping to different places and you can see there we have a blue uh, line up and a blue line across that means we've snapped it to center now we just need to align this a little better resize it a little better so we're going to have the width as let's say 70 that's probably too small isn't it let's have 100 and let's have the height as 180 that's probably not good enough i'm going to say 120 and 180 okay that looks a little better so now let's move this to be aligned in the center so about there i don't want it right in the middle but i want it around about there now because the way this is going to work this is going to be the card that we get dealt so we need another card here to represent the card that we are going to try and guess high or low so let's take this image hold control and press d to duplicate and then we have created a duplicate of that object we can't quite see it right now but if we move this across we can see there it is so now we have this we have one card which is going to be the one we see and another card which is going to be the one we get dealt when we press deal if we're going to guess high or low so let's start renaming these cards this first one i'm going to rename as guess card and this second one is going to be named as turn card and obviously there's going to be random generation here to generate random cards but that's a little later on in the series next what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have every possible card in the scene so i'm going to take that turn card hold control and press d and i'm going to move this off screen to there and i'm going to keep this as two and i'm sure you can probably guess what we're going to do now we need to duplicate that several times so let's hold control press d let's rename it to three and let's drag and drop the three card onto there and same again change that to four and this process may seem a little daunting it may seem a bit uh, annoying but don't forget some of these things can be really complicated to do and essentially what we're doing here is it's so simple like i said this whole process and creating this game is a very simple way and to be fair i think even by now most of you guys may have already realized how we're going to approach this and how we're going to do it and i i really hope you have because this is going to be a lot of fun to create so you can see all i'm doing at this point is duplicating the previous card so this is number nine drag and drop nine of hearts onto there duplicate that one this is going to be number 10 which is going to be that one now before i go any further you'll notice that we do indeed have 11 12 13 14. now 11 is jack 12 is queen 13 is king 14 is ace ace is going to be high for us no matter what it's not going to be low it's going to be high you can change that if you want to it's entirely up to you uh, but essentially all cards are going to have to have a number allocated one way or another and obviously the higher the number the more important it is so in this case so we make sure that even though a jack and queen are both equal to 10 we still need to make sure that the value of them the queen always beats the jack 
So we're going to deal with numbers in that sense. So this is queen. So let's drag the queen to there. And then we've got the king, and he's going to be allocated as 13. And finally, the ace, which is going to be number 14. So all of our cards that we're going to use are now allocated here. And they are all on top of each other, but like I said, in the hierarchy of things, we can see that number 14, the ace, is always going to be on top because that is the bottommost card. If we were to have 10 there, that will be there. So even though you can only see the ace, rest assured, all of our cards are there in the same position. Now, another great way that we can actually manipulate all of this is we're going to have two specific versions of each card. Now, although we have these here, these are only going to be placeholders for now, this guest card and turn card. The reason being is because we're going to use our ability to create all of these cards in those specific spots. So this tutorial is all about creating the visuals of it. So don't worry about how we're going to present cards. That will come probably in the next tutorial. So the next thing we need to do is we need to have buttons on here. So we need to have um, a deal button and we also need to have a high button and a low button. So let's have a little panel at the bottom of our screen where we have our buttons. So let's go to game object. Let's go to UI. Let's go to raw image. And this is going to be anchored down the bottom. Let's have the color as black. And let's have, in fact, now I think about it, let's have this stretch the bottom just so as it's always the same width as our game. So let's reset the anchor up here and stretch across the bottom. And let's position this down here. And then let's bring it across here. And you can see I'm using the rec tool again to snap these sides to each section. There we go. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, probably to about there. So next thing, we need three buttons. Let's go to Game Object, UI, and let's click on Button. Now, I'm not going to go into buttons too much. All we're going to do is texture them in this one. It's going to be the next tutorial where we really get to grips with how buttons work. But for now, let's move this button down here. Let's go to our textures, and let's take these three buttons. We've got the Deal card high button and low button and much like we did with the cards let's set them to sprite and click on apply next let's re-click on our button and we just need to drag and drop this deal card button over here on the ui sprite next we click the arrow next to the button and all that does is opens up an option for us to see what the text says on the button in this case, we don't need it to have any text because our button already says deal card on it. Now let's resize that button. So we can select the button once again here. And let's have the height as 100. Does that look okay? I think that looks okay. And then let's bring it down to about there. So we've got our deal card. Now next to it, we're going to have high and low. So here's a cool trick. Let's duplicate that button by holding control, pressing D, and let's bring it out this way. And let's apply this high to the source image. So high up there. And let's also decrease the height to probably about 48. And let's bring it upwards to there. And let's hold control, press D to duplicate once again. And let's bring this down to about there and add low right there. Now, before we finish this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on play. And when it's turned blue, as I said, we can play around with what we have here. So at this point, our buttons flash when we click them. Now, the great thing about this is we don't need any extra coding for them to work with mobile devices. Buttons you create in Unity automatically work whenever you tap the screen. That is the beauty of all of this. Because it's so simple in that creation, it can be used for PC and mobile without any real extra effort. And that's why I like Unity in so many different ways. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to 
delve a little more into buttons, maybe customize them a little bit more, play around. And we're also going to start C sharp coding to deal our first card. So until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching guys.